due to so many other factors. But then we need a system whereby there would be a special consideration for the girls who are leaving school, the girls who are not able to complete school, so that they can have some income on their own. Well, this is Spectrum on Radio. And tonight, presidential campaigns for 2011. There was a time when we say we used to say that road to 2011. Well, 2011 is here. We waited for months, we waited for weeks, we waited for days. Now we're counting hours. And on Spectrum, we have two guests, Mr. Arthur Laro, Programs Director of the National Energy Forum, authors of the Citizens Manifest. So they put it as a yardstick, a benchmark. They consulted citizens countrywide and uh, put their thoughts together and said, if someone has this, they, they have the uh, uh, citizens at heart. We also have Miss Pina Nandego from the a program officer at Forward, that is the Forum for Women in Democracy. Mr. Larocque, let's look at this scorecard for the candidates. Who did best? If you are to, if they were to scrap elections and go by, who would be president? Talk to us about that. Yeah, if, if they were to scrap elections, they could change their minds yeah, tonight the after hearing you. The interparty cooperation um, came out top in our analysis. Right. But before you know, statistics sometimes can be a problem. I just want to spend a few minutes trying to explain Please this do. methodology. Yes. Because first is that the methodology is primarily based on what was in the citizens manifesto. So if there is an excellent manifesto in terms of other issues that were not generated by citizens, it doesn't count for this assessment. Secondly, uh, depending on your, your location, um, the, the conclusions in this assessment are constrained. If, they, if people are critical, for instance, of the citizens manifesto, it means the analysis also goes with that criticism. So we are looking at the Citizens Manifesto. But regardless of all these uh, constraints, we think the Citizens Manifesto and other uh, initiatives, say the Women's Agenda and the Youth Manifesto and other policy platforms that have been articulated on HIV AIDS and the like, provide a useful basis. They are probably the best things on the market we can use to assess rather than any other subjective undertakings. So. We did an analysis, so we spotted, we identified 35 major, um, 35 major demands that are made in society, in politics, in governance and everything, and then uh, plotted what political parties, manifestos were saying about these issues. So, after that, so there is a matrix just shows that, you know, clearly which party says what. So on education, for instance, UPC is very clear. In fact, UPC goes farthest in education because... So on education, UPC yeah, is the best? Yeah, UPC has fantastic ideas. And the NRM? Education reforming. You know, NRM has a challenge because um, there are many things that are wrong with our education system that automatically, because they have been in government, everybody blames. Uh, everybody blames that. And that is one of the other challenges with the, with the, with the uh, analysis of any manifesto that sometimes incumbents have a benefit because they can talk about many things they have done, but also they have a challenge to explain what has been like. Somebody said, I think here yesterday, that uh, the president has been campaigning like an opposition person because he's saying, I will fix the road. What have you been doing? All Attacking about? potholes yeah. and other things. So, in, given that, that background, let me just uh, spend then one minute explaining who came top and, and how. Eventually, we identified um, five benchmarks upon, and then we weighted these benchmarks. So issues, the extent to which political parties articulate issues, we give, we, we gave a weight of 25. So just look at Citizens Manifesto, what have others said. Then the how, which means many people, sometimes many political parties know the problem, you know how we all know the problem, but we don't know the solution. The how, what are you suggesting actually to overcome quality education? What are you suggesting to overcome uh, environmental degradation and, and, um, and, uh, and agriculture? So we give a weight of, 20, of 30 of that for that the way political parties have analyzed that then the track record meaning what is it you have done on these issues what is your track record as a party uh, what have you done in the past uh, in contributing to these demands but more importantly we knew that track record would apply essentially to only two parties which is the UPC and uh, the NRM they are the only two parties that yeah, have been in power that have been in power so for governance related issues we have also looked internally within the parties how do they behave for instance, um, uh, interparty cooperation has never been in government. How have they dealt with issues on corruption? How, what has been their position in parliament? How have they dealt with things like succession? How have they resolved conflicts within their parties? That also counts. And for all that, we gave 10, 10, uh, uh, 10, 10 per 10 percent. And then the leader, the leader, we gave 20. The leader means 
is this leader being presented by the party credible? What have they done? Okay. What, what do you mean? That's, that could be subject. I mean, I mean, there is a there is a record clearly. All, All right. these political parties, you can find out uh, what their leaders have been up to and what their contributions have been in different leadership positions. Okay. Okay. And again, here, parliament controlling other, you see, for instance, DP. They have no, not been in power, but we know that DP controls uh, uh, largely the Kampala City Council. How have they performed? In Chira, they also. You oh, know, you went to that level. Yes, we went to that level. That sounds control. quite high grade. Yeah. So, so then the leader for instance, um, um, the DP leader is a person that has been in parliament, his record is clear there, he has been the chairperson of Gulu, his record is clear and the like. Finally, the, the, the final benchmark we used was timeline, which is what Agrippin has been talking about. So, how, how, what time frame if you look at the manifesto, can you really hold these political parties accountable when they come to power? They can say we build hospitals. When? By when should we be begin holding you accountable? So those are the benchmarks. Now, given all those, we scored all the political parties, and um, I think um, the the forum, the interparty cooperation where uh, FDC is uh, a front party, got 69 percent. Right. Uh, it was followed closely by the NRM with how many? At 67 percent. Right. And then uh, UPC at 66%, right. quite close, and then uh, DP at 62%, and uh, followed by, um, I think, Uganda Federal Alliance at 54 yes. then closely by PDP of Dr. Abed Bwanika, yes. uh, People's Development Party, I think, yes. with 52 right. and then PPP of Jaber Bidandi Sali at uh, 49 and then the last in terms of grading was Samuel Lubega whose manifesto really is like a speech it is not very very clear I've seen it it's yeah. only a few pages yeah it just says what we will do and whatever even UPC is very is a few pages but very succinct right. so so this is how we scored and um, and uh, it is very very at least f to the best of our knowledge it is it is credible in a sense so I said earlier that each party has strong points each party has for instance the NRM scored highest in terms of leadership 19 out of 20 because Museveni and his contribution is unquestionable. Right. Even those who hate him know that he has... The roads, we've seen the roads, even though some have portals. Yeah, but... Uh, he, but we know yeah. he's built some roads. Absolutely. The restoration of constitutionalism in this country, the, the infrastructure that he has done, the economy has been doing quite well. So all those, I think, were under his leadership. Then Ola right. Rautunu comes second in terms of also his leadership. That is unquestionable. And again here, we don't only look at leadership in the country, but your contribution to humanity wherever. It can be in an NGO, in the church and wherever, but what is it you have done that can be seen right. by, by citizens? So those are the parameters we use, but um, uh, the IPC came strongest on the issues because they have a, a correct diagnostic of Uganda's problems. Clear. Right. They, they, they came out and got 21 out of, out of 25. Right. And, and so, yeah, we can go into specifics of what I think is, fa is very good on each political party, which then gives us the conclusion which I think is more important than how uh, we scored, right. which is after Friday. Right. We will have a president. Yes. It might be somebody from opposition, it might be the president, the current incumbent. Right. What do you do? We think that isol in, in isolation, none of these political party manifestos goes far enough. Yes. But collectively, when you put them together, when you put them together this is the ingredient we need for transforming Uganda. Right. What does that mean in practice? It means that we should overcome what the DP calls zero-sum politics. Right. The winner takes all. Right. The, the, the next president of Uganda should transparently have discussions with political parties to see how ideas from their manifesto can inform what we are now calling a country manifesto for the next five years. A win-win situation. That's yeah, what yeah. That, like that, say, so that this. now political parties in parliament will fault the, the, the person in, in power for failing rather than not for taking good ideas. You've raised quite so, a number of points there, really. Yeah. Uh, let's try to do justice to them. One of, well, first of all, you make it very clear the IPC comes on top. Yeah. Did you try to discount the fact that some people th thought that it had been, uh, much of it had been lifted from the Conservative Party manifesto of the UK? Actually, I, I, I actually do not agree to that point. Well, it was published by yeah, the Independent. Yeah, it was published UK. by the Independent. In I read it. I read it. But the IPC, and I will tell you because we went and made a presentation of the Citizens Manifesto. Right. 
at the IPC manifesto retreat. There were high caliber people there. Right. Sir Richard Kaijuka. So they could so, basically oh Richard Kaijuka is an yeah, IPC. Yeah, he was part of the the the, the IPC right. manifesto draft. There were people like Amanyam Shega, yeah, Mujisha Muntu Mujisha, the, and others. Mujisha Muntu wasn't there when I went. Right. But those are the caliber of people. Right. So we must So they have the capacity yeah, to form absolutely. a solid government, the absolutely. IPC. Absolutely. Without a question. And that is the other point we also for Lubega for instance and uh, uh, Federal Alliance uh, PPP, they might not have pillars. Parties. They might not have structures actually, right. and so they might. So if we had a change of government, if IPC took power, they can form a government. I don't doubt. I don't doubt that at all. They can form government without any crisis. Without any crisis, really, Ugandans should begin to realize that this is our country and that we must contribute to the development. This is what we are saying, actually, Edmond, that regardless of who wins, civil society, political parties, uh, private sector should come to support All right. to ensure that uh, the country ultimately wins. I think that is the main point from this analysis. Of course, our time is very short, but let's yeah. get another thing. Yeah. You've, you, I mean, you meant fundamental issues here. Yeah. You're pointing a picture that yeah. our politics basically has matured. We've gone to a yeah. very, very high level. You cannot yeah. say we don't have other people with a vision anymore. No, no, no. How do you explain that? Five years ago, and yeah. now we're here, I think how do you explain that? What has Happened. Two things have happened that, uh, that have been quite uh, critical in our politics. One is the change of leadership in some traditional parties. Go on. Without a question, Ularao Tunu as a, a person has, has brought a breath of new life in UPC. Without a question. In the DP, they have done something they did not do in over, over 40 years. Changing leadership not on the basis of, you know, ethnic group, yes. but on the basis of a generation that they see that Mao represents. And this has counted clearly. You, you look at the DP manifesto and the youth, when they did their own analysis, DP came top. Right. In terms of their responsiveness uh, to, to the youth issues. So the emergence of leaders taking over important uh, uh, parties is another one. And then, uh, of course, uh, Betty Kamia, also uh, with the Federal Alliance and a announcing it as a, she came with ideas. And Betty Kamia on the campaign trail, I think, is the, is the candidate that had the clearest message. Clear. Everywhere she went, she explained that these are the resources you have in West Nile. Gold, cobalt, what? If you have federation, you will be in charge of these resources. Very clear. Everywhere. So, so I think um, the, the quality of articulation again, and they have invested really, they have invested in developing these ideas. So I, I, I believe that we are moving, we are not perfect, but we are moving in the right direction without a question. Obviously, Betty Kami is a marketer and she's an excellent communicator. Yeah, she's like, you it, can it, say that. She's an excellent, yeah. an unusually excellent communicator. Mm -hmm. Briefly before we go for a commercial break, yeah. if someone were to pick all right, let's go. If someone were to pick these ideas, how would they pay for them? I mean, I've, I've developed, you've talked about this thing, so the IPC, yeah. they meet in a meet in a room, yeah. they come up with all these ideas, and NRM says, I want to use these ideas. How yeah. do you do that? You, now, can they copyright them? In no, a way? no, actually, this is what should be done. That um, the winning candidate must approach political parties as institutions yes. and not just them to uh, get a Agrippina then I, I woo her to join my but that is not useful they must engage in a transparent discussion so that UPC DP whoever if DP is in power it can take fantastic ideas from the NRM manifesto about the economy and we know that this so that's why we are saying a country development manifesto is the is the ultimate that everybody can then own and then we fault the leader who is in power for not implementing rather than for failure to appreciate good ideas. We'll get deeper on that later. Agrippina from Forward. You said something about education. The, current, the uh, Citizens Manifesto says uh, the, current, the current education system produces people with masters who cannot write a letter. Yeah. Uh, I would like to maybe to agree with that. Yeah. First of all... People I mean, with master's degrees and they yeah. cannot write a letter. I don't want to be in that position. I could write a letter in P3. Go on. Yeah, maybe they can write the letter, but maybe the quality of the letter matters. And this is something which I think everyone is seeing. This